Hey guys, so this is section 7.5 uh, where we talk about fugacity and the equilibrium constant for real gases. Um, fugacity is a really interesting concept, um, pretty theoretical, um, but there's this really good comic um, that they, they made at, um, at Northeastern. I have a link to that um, right beneath this video in Canvas, so I highly recommend you look at that. It does go into some areas that fugacity deals with that we haven't gotten to yet, but we will later. But yeah, definitely worth looking at. All right, so um, it end, so we know that the pressure that's a, that a real gas exerts can be greater or less than an ideal gas exerts. Um, we're going to look at how, at the end of this section, we'll see how that affects Kp, equilibrium constant. Um, so we know that from section 6.3, the chemical potential of an ideal gas as a function of temperature and pressure is equal to the standard chem chemical potential, which is a function of temperature plus RT ln of the, pre the partial pressure of that gas over the standard pressure, which is one bar. We can write something similar like this, where the chemical potential as a function of temperature and pressure of a real gas is equal to the chemical potential, it's under standard conditions, um, plus RT ln of this F over um, standard F, where this F stands for fugacity and it's the effective pressure a real gas exerts. Now, it's not that straightforward, um, but the general idea is this, and again, I, I highly recommend that, that comic. Um, in, a re in a gas, in a real gas, the particles of gas interact with each other and they the interactions affect um, how, you know, the pressure that they exert. And um, that's what the fugacity takes into account. Um, so the standard fugacity is just the value that the fugacity would have at one bar if the gas behaves like an ideal gas, which just means that F standard state is the pressure at standard stage, which is just one bar. Okay, so we're going to use this here and do some stuff with it. So, <clears throat> we know this. When the density um, is such that the attractive potential dominates, then that means because the particles are interacting with each other, the pressure that's exerted by that gas is going to be less than the pressure exerted by an ideal gas, because in an ideal gas we assume that there is no um, interaction between the particles. And so that means that under those conditions, the molar Gibbs energy of the real gas is less than the molar Gibbs energy of the ideal gas. And that means that the fugacity is less than the pressure. The particles are interacting. They don't um, exert as high a pressure. Um, their Gibbs energy is, is lower, the molar Gibbs energy. On the other hand, in the repulsive range of the, um, the potential, um, then what that means is that the repulsions become more important and the pressure exerted by the real gas is greater than the pressure that would be exerted by an ideal gas. The molar Gibbs energy for the real gas is greater than the molar Gibbs energy of the ideal gas, and then the fugacity is greater than the pressure. Um, so in this graph right here, um, so oh, just a real quick reminder. Remember that um, chemical potential is basically the same as the molar Gibbs free energy. Um, so when you see G sub M, that's really the chemical potential, the molar chemical potential. Um, so <clears throat> we know, okay, so these equations down here, okay, we, we wrote them down in the previous slide. Just rearranging them a little bit, if we subtract the standard chemical potential from both sides, we get these equations over here, um, which is this, the left side of these equations is just the y-axis in this graph. So it's basically this side versus, you know, that the, the right side of the, the equality. Um, and what this is, is that the red line is for an ideal gas and the whatever color that is, blue or gray, is for a real gas. Um, um, versus pre pressure, pressure over the standard pressure. Um, so a couple things to, to notice about this graph. Um, first, um, as the pressure goes to zero over here, um, the fugacity goes to the pressure. So these, um, the, they, be, they, be, you know, they, um, they become equal, they become really close. Um, another thing is that when 
um, this yellow part here is where the attractive potential dominates. So what we were talking about up here, at that point, the fugacity is less than the pressure. And so we see the line for the real gas is, is underneath. It's lower than the line for the ideal gas. When we get to this point right here where they're equal, then past that, that's in the repulsive part of the, um, the potential. And now the, the fugacity of the real gas is greater than that of the ideal gas. So that's, that's something to keep in mind. Now, at constant temperature, any gas, real, real or ideal, we can say D molar Gibbs energy equals molar volume DP, um, which means that D chemical potential for an ideal gas equals the molar volume of an ideal gas DP. Same thing for a real gas. D chemical potential of the real gas is equal to the molar volume of the real gas DP. But since we know that the molar volume of a real gas is not equal to the molar volume of an ideal gas, except at some very special points, um, it's either greater or less. That means that what that means is that this D of the chemical potential for the real gas, that how it changes, changes at a different rate than it does for an ideal gas, the chemical potential. So if we subtract the twos, two, um, two differentials, um, it's equal to this, and then we integrate both sides from some initial pressure P sub I to some pressure P um, on both sides. Um, this side of the equation here, the integral of D chemical potential from one pressure to another is just the chemical potential um, of at you know, the upper bound minus chemical potential at the lower bound. Um, so for the real gas minus that for the ideal gas. And then we we're leaving this right side alone for the moment. Now, if we let the initial pressure go to zero, as the initial pressure goes to zero, the chemical potential at that pressure of the real gas becomes the same as the chemical potential of the ideal gas. So, okay, this is what we had so far. Um, now we're going to change the initial pressure to zero, and that means that the chemical potential of the real gas at PI equals zero and the chemical potential of the ideal gas at PI equals zero are the same and so they cancel out here and we're left with the chemical potential of the real gas at our final pressure minus chemical potential of the ideal gas at the final pressure and we leave the right side alone. But, okay, we know that the chemical potential for the real and the ideal gas are equal to what we showed on the first slide right here. Standard chemical potential plus RT ln of the ratio of F over F standard or P over P standard. So substituting those into the equation, we get this. This is chemical potential of the real gas. This is minus chemical potential of the ideal gas. Um, these terms right here cancel out. They go away. And we're left with the uh, ln terms if we divide through by RT. So we have 1 over RT on this side. We have ln F over F standard minus ln of P over P standard on the left, over there on the left side. ln of F over F standard is just ln of F minus ln of F standard. Same thing for the P's. So we get ln of F minus ln of F standard minus ln of P plus because the negatives cancel ln of P standard conditions. But because the fugacity um, it's, is just this at standard conditions is just one bar, the same as the um, pressure, standard pressure at one bar, this term right here and this term right here, whoops, cancel, they go away, they're gone. So it's starting to get a little simpler. So now we have natural well of the fugacity minus natural well of the pressure is equal to one over RT, this integral. Or, Bringing the ln of P over the other side, we have natural log of the fugacity is equal to the natural log of the pressure plus 1 over RT, this integral. Um, where we're going with this, by the way, is we want to get an expression for the fugacity, so, some way to calculate it, maybe. Um, it ends up, it's useful to write these molar volumes in terms of the compression factor, Z, um, because it's easier to look up compression factors than it is molar volumes. Um, so, Here's, here's kind of the algebra, right? So we're, what we're going to do is first just look at this term right here inside of the integral. And we're going to say we take that and multiply it by 1 in the form of 
one over the molar volume of an ideal gas over one over the molar volume of an ideal gas, because that's one, right? So we do anything but one. Bringing this inside of the parentheses, it looks like this right there. Check that and make sure you guys see how that happened. We have, but this term is z. This term is one. So on the top, we have z minus one. Also, on the bottom, use an ideal gas law, PV molar of the ideal gas equals RT, or P over RT is equal to one over the molar volume. So we replace this with P over RT. Bring the RT out front, and we have this term inside of the parentheses, the difference in the molar volumes is equal to RT times the compression factor minus one over the pressure. Now what we do is take this, substitute it for this in our integral, and we get natural log of the fugacity. It's equal to natural log of the pressure plus integral zero to P of Z minus one over PDP. Now if we take E to both sides, E, remember E to natural log of X is just X. So we get E to the natural log of fugacity is fugacity. Um, e to the natural log of P plus this integral. But because remember, X to the A plus B is equal to X to the A, X to the B. That's just E natural log of P, E to the integral. E to the natural log of P though, guys, it's just P. And um, so we get, and yeah, so we get this. Um, fugacity is equal to pressure E to this integral. Now what we do is we give this integral a name. We call it gamma. Why not, right? Um, it's called the fugacity coefficient, and it's defined as that integral. Um, well, E to that integral. E to the integral 0 to pressure Z minus 1 over PDP. That's the fugacity coefficient. And so when we write it like that, it looks really simple. Fugacity is equal to this coefficient times the pressure. Now it's a coefficient but it's not a constant because it depends upon both the temperature inside there as well as the pressure. But we can look them up or calculate them rather. So it ends up when the temperature is greater than the boil temperature, then it it's it works to write to modify the ideal gas law, not quite to the level of the Van der Waals equation, but like halfway there to write the equation of state as the pressure times the molar volume minus coefficient, just like in van der Waals equals RT. Um, it works well because it, it takes, with this term right here, it takes into account the, the volume, the finite volume of the gas particles right here. And, and it gives, does a pretty good job. So what we're going to do okay, is using the definition of the compression factor Z, pressure molar volume over RT. Um, and take this, what we're going to do is we're going to take this P, distribute inside it inside of the parentheses, and then bring the P minus B term over to the other side. So we get pressure times the molar volume here, which is this, equals RT plus, now this isn't lead, pressure times the coefficient B. Um, and if we divide both sides by RT, we get pressure volume over RT, which looks just like that, is equal to 1 plus pressure times B coefficient over RT. Um, but this is equal to Z. So we have the compression factor is equal to 1 plus, again, that's not lead, it looks a lot like lead. I should write it the other way. Pressure times B over RT. Um, so what we do now is we take the natural log of the fugacity coefficient. Remember, the fugacity coefficient, uh, or fugacity is equal to the gamma times P. So we could write gamma as fugacity over pressure. So natural log of fugacity over pressure um, is equal to natural log of, um, um, well, this is, this is gamma P over P. And the P's cancel, so we basically just get natural log of gamma is equal to natural log of e to the, this integral. But natural log of e to the x is just x. So natural log of gamma is just the integral from 0 to p, z minus 1 over p dp. Um, now taking what we got up here, substituting it in for z, the compression factor, we get 1 plus p times b coefficient over rt. The 1's cancel. The pressures cancel. 
and it becomes this. The natural log of gamma, the fugacity coefficient, is equal to the integral from 0 to p of b over rt dp. Um, when we integrate 0 to p, it's just equal to bp over rt. Um, now this is, you know, um, assuming that we can use this equation of state, but it, it, it works pretty well. So what we found under conditions where this works, temperature is greater than the boil temperature, um, natural log of the fugacity coefficient is equal to BP over RT, or gamma, the fugacity coefficient, is equal to E to the BP over RT. So we could calculate it if we know coefficient for that gas, pressure, temperature. So this graph right here um, is plotting the gamma, the fugacity coefficient, versus pressure for three different gases at um, 700 Kelvin, I believe. Now, <clears throat> remembering what fugacity is, um, like there, as the coefficient, the coefficient gamma goes, becomes closer to one, goes to one as the pressure goes to zero, because at that point, as, you know, as the pressure goes to zero, remember the fugacity becomes e equal to the pressure, so this becomes one. So as this gets small, this goes to one. Um, now, if the coefficient, the uh, fugacity coefficient is greater than one, it, it, rather it is greater than one, um, where we can see over here, which is this coefficient right here, if z minus one over p is greater than zero, Okay, in this range that we're integrating. Because if this is greater than zero, that means e to a number greater than zero is always a number greater than one. And that means that gamma, the coefficient, is greater than one. Likewise, if um, this z minus one over p is negative, so z is less than one, in other words, um, gamma is gonna be less than one. The fugacity coefficient will be less than one in that range of pressure from zero to whatever p is. Now, remember, um, in section 7.3, we showed that when the temperature is less than the boil temperature, the attractive potential dominates, and when the temperature is greater than the boil temperature, the repulsive potential dominates. <clears throat> so what that means is if, if the attractive potential dominates, that means the fugacity is going to be less than the pressure because it's, it's the, that attractive potential will prohibit the gas molecules from... Um, adding to the pressure. It, it, it holds them back. Right? Um, so that means that gamma is going to be less than 1. Right? And, right, because if the fugacity is less than the pressure, that means this is less than 1. Um, likewise, on the other hand, if the temperature is greater than the boil temperature, that's in the repulsive domain. And that what that means is that now, um, at that, that high of a temperature, the, the particles are... Um, um, well, the track, well the, the potential between them doesn't matter, um, but they're going to hit the um, inside of the container and create a greater pressure. That means the fugacity is going to be greater than the pressure, and the, it means if, that means that this has to be greater than 1. Um, one thing, though, this is not true um, if the reduced pressure is really large, because at that point, um, Z becomes greater than 1, and then this whole thing becomes positive. Um, so if we look over here, um, it ends up that the, um, the boil temperature for hydrogen and nitrogen is, um, is less than 700 Kelvin. So the T is greater than, because this is 700 Kelvin in here, T is greater than the boil temperature. And so we get um, the fugacity is greater um, than the pressure, the, and again, the fugacity coefficient is greater than 1. That's what these are, fugacity coefficients. On the other hand, for ammonia, um, the boil temperature is over 700 Kelvin. I think it's 900 something Kelvin. And so the, here the temperature is less than the boil temperature. And so that means that the gamma coefficient is less than one and the fugacity is less than the pressure. So what's, what's done is the the fugacity coefficient gamma is commonly graphed as a function of the reduced temperature and pressure because what that does is that lets you estimate by, by reading that graph the fugacity coefficient for any gas um, once you convert its temperature and pressure to um, the reduced temperature and pressure. 
these um, graphs here from your text were calculated for the nitrogen, um, but <clears throat> they'll work for most gases as long as the law of law law <laughs> law of corresponding states applies, and and it it does most of the time. Um, <clears throat> notice, okay, so it's broken up into two regions here. This is um, the each of these is an isotherm, the reduced temperatures. So from one to three on this graph, and then from three to twenty-four on this graph. Um, as the pressure, um, as the reduced temperature rather, um, gets really, really large, gamma becomes really becomes closer and closer to one, Be and that's because the attractive potential um, at really high temperatures um, is is overcome. It's not that important. The, the particles are moving so fast; they have so much kinetic energy that the attractive potential doesn't have the opportunity to 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 make them interact to allow them to interact. Because the fugacity is not equal to pressure unless the pressure goes to zero, um, we should most of the time use fugacities when writing the equilibrium constant for a real gas. And we'll call that K sub F the re for fugacities, right? Rather than, rather than KP. Now, so now let's take, look at our generic chemical reaction, AA plus BB in equilibrium with CC and DD, all gases. Um, the fugacity uh, or the equilibrium constant for the real gas, K sub F, would just be the, the fugacities over the standard fugacities, each raised to the power of the coefficients, so the products over the reactants. But the fugacity is just the fugacity coefficient times the partial pressure of that gas. So we can write the case of F this way, where we've replaced the, um, the fugacity with the coefficient times the partial pressure. And remember, the fugacity of standard states is the same as the pressure of standard states one bar. Um, so we get this, but within this expression here, the, the pressures, okay, raised to the coefficients is just Kp. Kp is all this stuff except for the, the gammas. So we can say that Kf for real gas is equal to Kp times the gammas raised to the powers of their coefficients, products over the reactants. So that's the relationship between um, the the equilibrium constant using fugacities and Kp. Now, as a practical matter, in, in most lab conditions that most chemists do, um, unless you're in industry, um, pressures are going to be near one bar. Kp, it ends up is very, very close to K sub F, and we can just use Kp. Um, but when you get into high pressures, like you run into during a lot of industrial processes, then it, it becomes really important to use K sub F. Um, so we can set the fugacity of a gas equal to its partial pressure as long as pressure, volume, and temperature are not close to their, their critical values. So, um, so we see here that as we get close to, so this is, um, we saw this graph before, fugacity coefficient versus the reduced pressures. Um, as close to, um, when the pressures get down to one bar here, then they all time to merge to, the coefficients merge to one. And there we go.